Hi guys, welcome back to Cattle View Farm and Zoo. Um, in today's video, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because I've got a little project just behind here. I'll give you a little sneak peek, just something there, which is going to be the episode after this. But I've had an idea in the meantime. So, obviously, last episode we finished off the European fallow deer and the red deer enclosures. And then we've got a little something here. I won't go into that too much. But today we're actually hopping over to the other side, more like the farm side. And we're doing more of like a kind of like nature reserve area and then we're going to do some wetland animals because i know i put, put like a little poll up on the youtube page just to see what people wanted and um, so i've just kind of created this tiny little like nature reserve area so far and um, i've downloaded a couple of the bird packs by captain callum i believe i will link them down below um but i just went for a couple which commonly you would find in the UK so you've kind of got like different types of geese you've got like the grey lag geese um, you've got the barnacle geese and Canada goose which you'd kind of see in the UK I don't think you'd see any of these other ones uh, red breasted goose I think you can find them I'm sure I've seen them in the UK and then I downloaded some hawks as well so obviously we've got like the hen harriers peregrine falcons um, we've got honey buzzards at some points in the year uh, red kites they're quite a popular one over here um, common buzzard I see them quite a lot we've got a couple of ospreys as well um, I've actually luckily seen one of them in the last couple of weeks which is cool um, but the rest I think they're more kind of native to other places um, I also downloaded this as well because it had the mandarin duck we do have a couple of well, I say a couple, we have quite a lot of mandarin ducks in the UK. Um, as the name suggests, they're not actually from the UK. They are from Asia, but my local park down the road has these in the pond and they're just kind of chilling, they love life. Um, and then I also downloaded the owl packs. So I've already had a little play around with this because I think it's pretty cool. Um, but only a handful of these are native in the UK. So we've got the barn owl, that's the most common. Um, we've got the European tawny owl, that's also quite common. Uh, these two, so the long-eared, that is, I don't want to say common because it's quite rare to come across in the UK, but the numbers are going up. Um, the short-eared owl, we also have these in the UK, and I don't know if we've got the little owl on here, but no, we don't. It's probably about that size, actually. It's very small. Um, another non-native owl to the UK. Um, I've not actually seen that one, but apparently they have one at Yorkshire Wildlife Park, which lives with the painted dogs. So I'm hoping at some point I do actually get a chance to uh, to see this. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to go through, I'm probably going to pick out a couple of the geese actually because I wanted to add probably some barnacle geese into my little pond area. So I just made this little area, I have popped some owls in, I couldn't resist popping a couple of uh, <laughs> tawny owls in. Uh, there's one there and there's one on here. So obviously tawny owls kind of just stay in the woodlands and stuff, they don't tend to come out often. Um, the barn owl, that's fairly common, I'd say they live pretty much anywhere. Um, but the barnacle geese, we do get them sometimes, they do migrate from, I can't remember where it is they migrate, but it's, I think it's the Isle of Sheppey up in Scotland, and they're like a prey item for the white-tailed eagle, which also migrates at some point. Um, I've not managed to see them, but I would really, really like to get out with my camera and actually see those. Um, so another one as well, I am going to add the grey lag goose. I do quite like these ones. I see these ones a fair bit, to be fair. Um, these ones are quite common at a couple of different RSPB sites. Um, I've seen quite a few of these at Titchwell Marsh in Norfolk. And I saw quite a few at Snettisham RSPB site as well. Uh, which is meant to be kind of like a breeding site for Egyptian geese but I've not actually seen any Egyptian geese there. It's a little bit far for me to go but I'm back there in November so hopefully I can have a little look around and hopefully try and find some stuff. Um, so the geese I've just added, I just wanted to add like a couple of um, just standard ducks as well like mallards and stuff but I want to see if there's any, let's just see if there's any others. Uh, the mandarin dot would definitely add in these two, so we'll move them into position. They don't tend to live in great numbers, the mandarin duck. They just kind of live their lives and just kind of chill. Um, obviously, the male and females are a little bit different. Um, the males are 
really like extravagant they've got like all little tufts and stuff and um, they're all multicolored I will pop a picture up here because I've got a picture of both um, both male and female that I've seen um, and then the females are more kind of like grey they're a bit more smoother looking if that makes sense whereas these have got like feathers coming off the head kind of like a tuft coming off the back they're pretty cool to be fair um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to do for this little nature reserve area kind of got the the vibe you'd come up onto this sort of like podium thing this little like bird hide watching place um, I've not had a look on the workshop but I was hoping I could try and find some like kingfishers just to kind of pop on these like little sticks um, but obviously the water's quite shallow here so it's probably not going to have uh, kingfishers around so that was the the kind of area I wanted to create I'm also going to kind of replicate something similar to here but more focused on like geese and stuff and probably going to see if I can find any other like wading birds just to pop in here make it a little bit sandy around the edge or something but what I'm going to add on this bit here is the red crown crane so same again I'm going to kind of just I'm going to make the water a little bit deeper but more in the middle so I'm going to use the flatten to terrace and I'm going to pop it at about six I think I'm going to have like a little island in the middle because I have kind of feel like these would like to just chill on a little island as such. Um, I am just going to make that a tiny little bit deeper, just just kind of like around the edges. Um, I will use flatten to um, flatten to terrain for this, just to give it a little bit of depth and stuff. But my idea was to kind of have like the backstage area here, possibly like a little separation area, and then I was going to kind of have like a really low barrier just so you can kind of see them at, at eye level as such. Uh, so let's just test that water, just kind of see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty cool. So also I've got this here, this isn't gonna kind of stand for anything. I just wanted it just to kind of make it look like it was kind of keeping the, the native species away from the zoo species. So I think I will just kind of carry on that same theme. I'm probably gonna use just the standard chain link fencing um, it's quite common whenever I seem to build something I quite like this fencing so we just kind of go with it I'm going to do it in very small increments as well just using the I believe it's at 4 meter at the minute but we're just going to kind of stick with that loop it all the way around and I'm going to stop it about there I think because I think this is where we're going to start the build in and I'll probably null barrier the majority of this here and then I'll probably do like a a little bit here or something um, but yeah pretty much what I was planning I need to check their Zoopedia actually because I'm hoping they can't jump out but I think I've got escapes off anyway so it doesn't really matter what kind of um, what kind of fencing I've got and they only need a meter so I think at the minute yeah these are at two meters so I can just pretty much swoop that the whole way around and I can probably, I might drop it down to 1m50 I think, I think that's quite a suitable height. Um, I'm just going to get the Angry Archer as well, just for kind of like reference. Uh, I feel like I can go a little bit lower actually, I could probably go down to the 1m. So let me just grab those again. I will fix up that part for the Nature Reserve as well. And then we're just going to drop that down to about there, I think. And then just with this post in the middle. So I just need to select the post and then just make that two meters like that. And then that keeps that fence and then it just kind of has like a little bit of a, a gradient. So that is pretty much the height which we're going for. Um, obviously, I presume in real life the red cranes can kind of like do that fly where they run and skim. But I've seen game, they're not going to do that. They do like little jumps and stuff, but they're not gonna not gonna escape because I've got it turned off in the settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little art line in, and then I'll hop back just so it's not tedious. I'm gonna hop back and just make like um, almost like a little off show area here, and just like a little indoor. Bit. I'll probably do like a little indoor view in here actually, and a little gate or something. But yeah, I'll just hop back once I've got like kind of like the flooring down and the walls, and then we'll we'll kind of decorate it from there. So just give me two seconds. Okay, so that is the outline of the building. 
So it's pretty much how I imagined it. So this is just kind of like a, a viewing window. We're going to have a couple of enrichment items and then we've got a separate kind of staff entrance here. Um, what I've done here is I wanted to create kind of like the illusion there was almost like a separation pen kind of thing. Um, obviously there isn't, it's going to be one big pen. So the null barrier will kind of go from here all the way around. And then what I'll probably do is I will probably just grab this. Actually, I'm going to do this while I'm here. Um, I'm probably going to delete that bit out and probably just move that post so it sits into there like that. And then I'm probably just going to do the same with that because obviously this bit, it's not got any animals in. It's just for, just for show really. Um, and then hopefully from there what I can do is I can actually add the... Oh, just one sec, I don't want that there. We want to be adding it this way. So we want the null barrier. And then same again, just using the little keyboard trick I learned. So just using the plus and minus. It did not like that. I don't know why it didn't like that. Right, there we go. Well, let's just come out the trees a sec. And then what I can do here is I can just drag that almost to where I need it. And then just hitting minus on the keyboard again. Be also good if I had um actually I was gonna say the uh, angle snap but I'm not gonna use that. Uh, I'm just gonna freehand it because I think that's gonna be easier. There's too many trees in the way. Uh, just like that. And then just shorten that a little bit to one sec. Now I'm just gonna pop that there and then pop that to there and then pretty much same again all the way over just like that so what I am going to do is I'm just going to make sure that this bit is nice and flush because when I put the, the habitat gate in I can just use these um, these two bits just to kind of maneuver it into place uh, so that sits quite nicely obviously this is going to act as the keeper area um, it's obviously not going to be used as a keeper area because we don't have them um, I will just put a little book there or something. Obviously, they don't need it in the zoo because there's quite a lot um, dotted around, but just for ease of access and also to cover this area, I'm going to add one in and just add a little roof on top of it. So if we just hop back in to the actual build itself, um, I'm just going to put some glass on here. I know they're not too too shy, I don't think, so let me just check that. Uh, one second. Yeah, so they're not too bad the neutral so i think we should be okay with just standard one-sided glass or just standard glass to be quite honest so let's see which one we'll probably use um probably just use this one to be fair just make sure the angle snaps on and then just pop it into position and then i can just kind of lower it down just until it's at a good height and then another idea I had as well, um, just before I forget, because if I start doing something, I'll probably end up <laughs> end up forgetting about it. So I wanted to, I did want to have a little bit of a path here, but for some reason we can't actually get too close to it. Is that because I've got flattened terrain on? That'll be why. There we go, that's what we wanted. Obstruct it's probably to do with that barrier actually, so let's just if we just move that barrier back a touch, we should be okay to finish the path for that area. Mm, no, okay. Uh, I mean, it's not not the end of the world. That that should be fine. I can't complain with what I've got there. That should should cover it. I can also add a path cover on or something. So I'm just going to rejoin the path back up as well. I don't want it to kind of go a little bit weird because it's a little bit bigger. But if we do, obviously the paths are a little bit janky in this game, so <laughs> we'll just have to make do with what we've got. I'm going to put some like shrubbery and stuff here and some bushes. Um, 
But yeah, I think that is pretty big. Um, I don't know if these can actually share with a flamingo or not. No, they can't. To be fair, they are different sides of the world, so it's probably not going to... Flamingos are usually like this area, but they're up here, so... Um, yeah, we'll just stick with that. We're not going to add Japanese macaques because we haven't got the <laughs> we haven't got the land or anything for them. So let's just hop in. We're going to grab some now while we think about it. Uh, so we just want some red crowned cranes. going to do is mainly have females and just a couple of males so I don't want it to go too kind of crazy and have like thousands of like males and no females so I think we're going to stick with that to be quite honest um, let me just select all the ones that I need and we'll be able to tell how many I've got so 12 all together that seems a lot more than 12 that's fine. And then I'm just going to unpause for a second and just pop them all into the quarantine. So as you've probably seen in recent episodes, I have kind of hidden the quarantine down there. Um, nothing against the building, I just don't want it on show. So I just popped it there. I think I've got another one somewhere. I can't remember where. I don't want to go too far over there because I don't want to spoil the, <laughs> the surprise for next episode. And um, the reason I did that is because over there I need to just kind of figure out which way it's going. I've got both animals sorted, um, well idea wise what I want to put in there but I just need to kind of figure out the scenery and stuff. Um, I think whilst we're waiting for those to clear the quarantine I've just had a really good idea so because we've got the owl pack and we have a barn we're going to add some barn owls in there. Jesus Christ. did not realise there was so many pigs in there. I feel like I've just left them for about six months and just let them go crazy. Um, yeah, I'll sort that in a sec. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some barn owls in here, I think. So I might just kind of add them in the little ledge bit up here or something. But they tend to just kind of sit, sit almost on the ledge like that. Yeah, we'll probably have two because they tend to just, just live in pairs. So just like that. And obviously not many people will see them. But yeah, let's um, let's tackle the <laughs> the pig situation because I don't know what's happened there. Um, how many have we got in here? 18. Oh my god. Right, so babe the pigs are okay. Um, I might just get rid of all of them from down. Down here, I think. Jesus. Right, that should hopefully free up that enclosure. Let's get rid of them too as well. So we've just got Babe the Pig and Noah. I, don't, I think that's a random name. I didn't name it that. Um, so let me let me do the same on this side because we've got a little bit of a pig farm going on. We're just going to get rid of absolutely all of the ones apart from the top two. Because they would have been the oldest. Let's sell them. And then that should hopefully just leave us with... Yeah, BLT. That was definitely... Um, I did not name that. That was a suggestion, so... <laughs> we'll skip past that very quickly. Um, but yeah, I don't really think I've showed kind of this side of the farm. I got really bored one Sunday and just made crop fields. I know they have no bearing on the game or anything, but what else can you do when you're bored and you're thinking of stuff to do? So yeah, I built a crop field. Wasn't needed, doesn't need to be there, but it's there, so we run with it. So let me just check to see. Just get rid of all these. It's fine, get rid of that. 
So I think our red cranes are having a bit of a delay. Oh, we've still got two, two red deers. We need to get them. Oh, three red deers even. Yeah, we need to move them. Oh, we've got one. Let's reselect that because I've not done that right. That's a red deer. I think it's still. I don't know if that glitched out then, but I was trying to move those deers and it was still having them as slight selected. Right, there we go. One red deer. So the red deer's on the right, well, left side, depending which way you look at it. And then the two fallow deers, they can be shifted into the fallow deer enclosure. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll just wait for all the cranes to finish in the quarantine. Well, I think in the meantime, I'm just going to pause the game just because I don't like leaving it unpaused. Um, I'm going to kind of decorate this area. I haven't really got a theme in mind, so I'm thinking probably like a couple of rocks, maybe like a little kind of waterfall here or something. Um, I was going to make half of this kind of rock and then the rest kind of like mud. Because um, I wanted to put like a foraging pool in here because I know they use the foraging pool So let's just filter down and see what bits and bobs they actually need in their enclosure uh, Yeah, so they can use the forage pool So I think if we pop that there, obviously we've already got the water in so it's not gonna Mess around with the with the kind of landscape and stuff So I think there is gonna be the best place. Uh, I don't know if we can See if we can actually fit it. No, I hate that. Um, we're going to leave it there. Shift it back a bit. And then I can just kind of decorate that with a couple of rocks and stuff. I'm going to see if I've got any rock pieces I've downloaded off the workshop. Um, we've got the rock piles by Caesar Creates. They could work. I don't know if they're going to be a bit too much, but we can give it a go. I'll have to sink a couple of these, just kind of up to, up to there like that. Um, I think it could work actually. It actually looks pretty cool to be fair. And then what I could probably do is just kind of add a couple of these around the edge like that. Just to give the illusion there's been like some excess kind of rocks and stuff. Um, and then I think what I'll do is I'll actually just hop into... Jesus Christ, what's going on? Let's try that again. Uh, I can just kind of hop in and just cover these edges just like that I think. Probably gonna have to use a couple of different styles, I think. Because these are gonna kind of flip over and go all weird, but we should be able to make it work. Mm. Yeah, I'm just gonna play around and see which rocks actually want to use for the edge because the that one can be a bit better actually it's actually the right the right way around so I'll probably use that a little bit more freely something like that I think and then I could probably also add a fair amount of this um, this grass, I guess. Maybe sprinkle some just around the edges as well, just to give it a bit more of a realistic vibe. Um, yeah, I think that that works. I'm 
trying to think if there's anything else I can just kind of add. Let's see if there's any any other rock formations and stuff. Because if I could probably sink a couple of these down as well. I mean it could just give a little bit of texture around the edges and stuff. As you kind of see this, you know, on like I'm not saying it is a dock side, but sometimes when you go to almost like seaside areas you see like just random rocks along the side and um, obviously rocks make stuff look pretty cool so we'll um we'll carry on that theme and just kind of go with it i think it can add pretty cool detail as well to be fair because you can kind of make it more focused in some areas sink it down so it's quite um quite light or you can kind of bring them up and it's quite quite intense um, so obviously I'm just gonna kind of flip between all three of them I think uh, I think that's the best way to do it just so it's not the same all the way around um, I could kind of just do little bits like that uh, I could probably add more focus on this area to be fair and then same again And then I think on this area here, I feel like this is where they would stand and do the, I don't know what you call it, like this scrook, <laughs> if that's the right word. Um, we'll go with it. But where they do all like the calls and stuff, because they're quite noisy like these are in the game. Um, I feel like they'd probably kind of stand there and do that. So we'll try and incorporate that in, maybe have some like high points or something. I think that could be pretty cool. Um, I want that big rock in the corner about there. That looks way too samey, so we're going to move that. And obviously I can, I can fill this in with probably some reed beds and stuff. Um, probably just pop some in now actually to be fair. And then I can use some of the, what are these called, cattail reeds, I did not know that's what they was called, but I learned something new every single day. And we could probably use random rotation as well to be fair, that would be nice and helpful. Um, what are these ones called, common reeds, okay. So yeah, I've seen, I don't think I've actually seen these common reeds, I'm sure I've seen these like nature reserves and stuff but I don't think I've seen the, the kind of common ones and that's probably a little bit backwards because I would feel the common ones would be a little bit more popular I would have thought but then again I don't even know if these are plants that we see in the UK but I've definitely seen the, the red ones I'm sure of it okay I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up I'm just going to kind of carry this theme all the way around. Um, I'm not going to touch the middle island. I'm just going to kind of jump ahead, finish the outside of this, because I think I'm going to use some different rocks as well. Um, I'm going to get that all finished, and then I'll hop back in a second. Guys, okay, so I think I've decided on what I'm actually going to put on here. Uh, I think I'm going to use some of the mossy rocks and then probably some foliage, just to give it that kind of like dampish kind of look. Um, so what I've done around the edge here is I've just followed it on with various different of these rocks from the Caesar Creates Rock Formation Pack, I believe it's called. Uh, that one there, Rock Piles by Caesar Creates. Um, if I remember, I will leave a little link to that one in the description just to take you to the Steam Workshop. Uh, console players, I don't know if these will be on the workshop. It depends if Caesar's created them on console, if he's got console, I don't know. Um, might be worth having a look because he's made some pretty cool stuff. Um, so yeah, what I also like as well is I've added just a little bit of sand just to the bottom of this because I think it adds quite a nice little um, little texture rather than having mud and stuff. Um, further around the edges I have used the rock, um, the rough rock, sorry. Um, well it is rough rock, I was <laughs> the right way. Um, so yeah, I just kind of made it like a little bit of a, a sand bed to be fair. Um, I am going to follow that all the way up to here 
Um, these guys don't have too much enrichment in game, so I've just kind of added a feeding bowl by the window, so you can kind of come see them feeding, or you can kind of see them foraging in their in their pool and stuff here. So I'm just going to grab a couple of the mossy rocks, and um, also as well. I did add some of the underwater hydrilla, I believe you say it. And then I know these are meant to go underwater, which is the eelgrass, but I've used them around the edge. Uh, just because I think, you know, if you sink them down like that, they add quite nice textures. Um, so I kind of said to myself off camera, I was like, I'm not going to do any more. And then, yeah, I'm here putting more, <laughs> more grass down. So we're not doing any more of that. We'll leave that. Um, and then on here, I'm just gonna have a look through the rocks. So the kind of mossy rocks, I was thinking of kind of having them. That's not a good placement, so I've put um, a little hidden sprayer thing there. So I am just gonna leave that that little piece out. Um, I was thinking of just kind of having like a, a little ridge like this. Just kind of pushing it down, just to create that kind of like stepped Kind of vibe. I can go in with smaller ones. Um, I did see Sparrow do that in her most recent video. She used like the really, really small ones, probably like that size, and just kind of dotted them in between, and it made quite a good, good texture. And she also layered them a lot better than what I'm doing here, but <laughs> we'll give it the best shot. Um, if you want to check out that one, I believe it was. I can't quite remember. But what I'll do is I'll put one of them little stamps up here to Sparrow's video where she did this little rock formation. And yeah, it was pretty much just kind of layering and a little bit like this. Um, she went a little bit more in depth and did probably more more like that kind of layering. And then she kind of came back and did just kind of like stuff like that. And it looked really, really cool to be fair. So I thought, you know what, next time I do something, I'm going to give that a good go because it looks amazing. So yeah, we're just going to kind of do probably just this section to be fair, all mossy. Um, obviously I don't want the whole lot to be kind of mossy, I just want that little little bit there. And then I think on this side I'm going to use some of the native as such stuff from that area. Uh, so I'm just going to filter it down to Asia because they're from Asia. Um, and I'm just going to kind of have a look and just see what I would typically see in these kind of enclosures. Obviously I don't want to go too crazy. Uh, I'm not going to use that one more. So we could use some kind of like brambles potentially here just to kind of break it up a little bit just to make it look a little bit a little bit better. Um, I could probably also pop in let's just see what that looks like. Just from kind of like all angles. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I can probably also add one around here. Actually, we're going to use a different one just to spice it up a bit. We'll add one. Oh, that last one didn't even place. I thought it did, but it didn't. So we can kind of just add stuff like this. Um, obviously, bracken, that's good. We've used that quite a bit in the zoo already, so I don't want to go too kind of crazy with it. But we will add just a few little bits just to give it a little bit of coverage. I'll probably add some here as well. Something like that I think. And then obviously we've got like the, the kind of main feature there. Uh, what was this? Oh god I don't know what that looks like. Sci-fi. We don't want that. Um, I could also add some some reed beds probably here I think as well. And I could probably cover some of that up as well with a few reeds. Yeah. I don't really want to go kind of too crazy because I'm quite happy with no way. Um, we could probably add some of them for a bit of variety. Maybe add one here and possibly like one there. Oh, that's quite big, I don't want that. No, uh, common water lilies. No, I like the ones without the 
Oh, actually. If I turn the line to water on it, should just... Probably add some of these, actually, where I've added a couple of the, the reed beds. Just like that. And it just kind of pads out the area as well. Obviously, I know in real life there'd probably be all kinds of like pond animals and stuff kind of chilling. Um, obviously, we're just we're building a zoo, so <laughs> it's not gonna it's not gonna be too too crazy. Um, I do kind of think of having like a wooden structure here, but I don't think I want to. I think I just kind of want to leave it. I might actually just terrain it to be fair. I might add maybe just a different different kind of level here, I think. Um, we are going to go over that because we don't want... We do not want that. And then I think with the soil stuff, I'm probably going to add just some kind of marks where I would kind of imagine them to just kind of go to and from. Um, so I'm probably going to do something like that, I think. Just to make it look like, obviously, they are coming in and out and using what we've, what we've kind of put down for them. So I think... I'm actually quite happy with that, to be fair. Hmm, yeah, I think that works quite well, actually. Um, so I'm just going to pop the roof onto the building, and then what we'll do is we'll pop the cranes in and we'll see how it goes. I think it'll look pretty cool once the cranes are in and they're kind of stood because I think it'll fill out this area a bit. Um, if worse comes to worse I can just add some rocks around the edge here just to give it like a little bit of a ledge. Um, but we're going to see what it looks like once they're in. Um, I probably will, probably will do that now that I've added that idea into my head because once I've got an idea I'm not, not getting away from it. So in my head I want to use like a green roof so I don't know if there's any flexi colour I don't even know if you can search like this uh, apparently you can uh, but I want I know what I want when I see it maybe something like that and if we do dark green and possibly like a, a black I think That's pretty cool. And as well, I'll go over why I left this um, this little ridge as well in a second. But let me just get the, the roof on top. Okay, and then because obviously this back bit here up to a certain point will be flat. I am just going to use the standard flat one because it's at the back. No one's really going to see it. So I'm going to do it like that, and I'm just going to move that wall inwards as well because I'm not overly happy with it being where it is. So if we move that in, and then I can just kind of have a, a little bit of a play around. Um, what I have noticed as well, because I changed all of the, what well, I say all of the walls, all the walls at the front, um, I've actually not kind of done what I needed to so yeah let's just go back in with the, the stone pieces and I can just fill the gaps um, I need to go back to walls and then I believe it's the breeze block one I used which is this one just trying to line that up as, as best as possible and then here I need a one meter piece just to fit in nicely with this bit and then I think instead of um, just going back around again I am just gonna just do this I think it's easier just to do this it'll just save loads of time kind of hiring up the walls um, I am gonna pop one there and I'm also going to pop on there. So the reason I left this was kind of like a ventilation kind of thing. Um, obviously I know, obviously in real life there'd probably be like heaters and stuff in here, so I wanted to have some kind of ventilation as well as it having a little bit of shelter. So let me just get rid of all this 
grass in here. We use the lawnmower as I call it. Get rid of all this. Then there's just a little touch there. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted. Um, I am going to just kind of go around. I know we're in sandbox mode, but I'm just going to add some information boards and stuff. I like the look of the, um, I believe it's Lions information boards. Let me just check for you. Uh, it was the InfoScience modular pack. And I'm sure somebody called Lion made this, but again, if I, if I remember, I will link these two. But you've got the names here, it's Info, Science, Modular Pack 2, and just the Modular Pack. So um, yeah, I'm just going to get the red cranes in and then we'll hop back. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of foliage around here and just fill out this area. And then we'll hop back and see them in their enclosure. Okay, so all the red crown cranes are now in the enclosure. There's still going to be a couple trickling through every now and then. Um, I've checked the space and they're all good obviously they can't escape because it's got it turned off um but yeah i think what we've got so far let me just select something in the distance i'm in this mode um so you can kind of stand and just i did change that like i said i <laughs> changed it into rocks but that's what i meant about how they do that little like run and fly thing um but i have just added a couple more birds out of the pack um, so I did add a couple of the red-breasted geese um, just around the edges. Obviously I've kind of made the edges a little bit fancy. I added some benches. Um, I added a couple of uh, lion signs. So I've got a little pack over there somewhere. One of these. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but it's one of them. Um, but yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I did add a couple of other birds. So I added the spoonbill. Um, I added some more red-breasted geese as well and then I also added this little um, kind of like easter egg uh, so he's the, the king goose talking down to his minions so they're going to be the trouble causers of the pen obviously these probably flew over from here they just kind of share it um, but yeah I'm quite happy with it to be fair I think it's worked out quite well uh, yeah just pause that and see it's pretty cool to be fair. Quite happy with that. Although he's just done his uh, business, I didn't see that. And again, lovely. But yeah, they just kind of roam around and yeah, they're pretty cool to be fair. Quite like them. It's a nice little that uh, oh. have to pop them every time. I don't know if anyone can remember, but on I'm sure it was Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. And you can't actually do this on Planet Coaster from what I've seen. But you used to be able to click on the, you know, like the little pigeons that fly around, obviously not in this game, in Planet Coaster and Roller Coaster Tycoon. But when you used to do it in Roller Coaster Tycoon, you used to click it and it used to like take all the feathers off the bird. And I kept trying to do it in Planet Coaster, but they've not brought it over. So quite upset about that. But there's always Planet Coaster too. So <laughs> I'm hoping they, uh, <laughs> they bring it through. Um, and then this area here, obviously you've got staff entrance obviously this building is just very very basic it's just to provide shelter um, but we've got this really cool little viewing area obviously when the keeper does come through I'll try and capture some of it um, off camera and I'll pop it into like the cinematics at the start or the end depending whichever um, but yeah I'm quite quite happy with this to be quite honest I think it's worked out quite well it's a lot more scenery than what I usually tend to do for my enclosures as you know we tend to keep it quite quite clean and I'm not saying that it's messy or anything but it looks quite cool um, yeah I think I've added a fair amount of scenery and I quite like the way this area is kind of going in direction and um, I think here I'm gonna do like a row of trees here because this is gonna be like the swamp pop the balloon and um, so I'm gonna have like a raised platform I think and then have Possibly the saltwater crocodile on one side. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do capybaras, separated, and American alligators. And then I'm going to do like the saltwater crocodiles here. Because I want this to kind of be like a wetlands area. So, yeah, it's all work in progress. Um, I'm going to do it one episode at a time, just so it's not all 
all in kind of like smushed into one. Um, I want it all to be nice and separate. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to leave this one here. I think we've I've done pretty well with the scenery and stuff. These rock packs have helped out a massive amount. So yeah, if you do remember, go and grab them from the workshop because they are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we'll just leave on the... Uh, oh, he's joining in on the meeting as well. So this one is going to be a trouble causer. Moto, we'll call him Moto Moto. There you go. Good timing. Okay, so he's joining in on their little weekly meeting. Um, he's just getting the schedule to see what trouble they're going to be causing. So I'll leave you with that, uh, <laughs> that cinematic like that. Um, if you have enjoyed this one, let me know below what you want to see next. Uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe. And I'll put all the links, um, I know I mentioned about linking videos where the inspirations come from for the rocks and stuff. I'll pop them into the little cards at the top. But I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers guys, thank you, bye bye.